Okay, here we are. In a little shed, wooden shed here. Let me get some water out. Actually, uh, I know it says uh, Fiji water. I say Fuji sometimes. Ah, what the hell? But it's not really Fiji water it's here right now. Actually, it's Brita filtered water. It's just that this container, the Fiji containers, are very that hard plastic. You know, before they used to have like when you get the. Uh, you know, I'll just I don't want to send a sell, sell a brand, but some other brand. What happens is they they might sit in the warehouse for a long time, so that stuff leaks into the thing, and, and uh, it's not good for you. So this is um, you know Brita filter water, and um, I'll tell you about water some other time. I actually have a post going to come up uh, I think November talking about water, what I'm trying to do in South Africa. Anyway, hmm. just wet my whistle. Um, some stuff happened this week. Well, let me see what triggered what I'm going to speak about. I might be speaking for a very long time about this. Is a, a colleague of mine who knows me very well, right, sent me this link to a New York Times article talking about uh, giving these uh, antidotal uh, things about COVID, you know, people recover, you know, that, that what, what newspapers do. I didn't read it, okay, so I'm not commenting on that. But here's the thing. He knows that I don't deal with the Times or any of the other, you know, big time, you know, how to say, edited, uh, uh, controlled medias. Okay, he knows very well. So I'm a little disappointed, right, that he would like you know, send this to me. And plus, I send him stuff to all terms. See, because I send him stuff like, okay, let me let me let me go back. Um, uh, when I got out of when I graduated uh, undergraduate school with with a degree in communications. Actually, my specialty was with the video, you know, the video tape, the early video tape, and also a TV production. Strangely enough, I had a radio program over at um, I was at Livingston College, but over at the um, Rutgers College, um, uh, they had a broadcast station. So I actually, um, I, I got my third class endorsed license with a certificate, and I, I got a radio program there and all the rest of that stuff. And that's where I learned I learned radio really from the actually I learned radio from the first radio uh, exposure I got which was uh, before I got to, to undergrad, well, Livingston as undergrad school, when I was uh, still in the Air Force. And uh, I became, uh, when I, I was, had a job, part-time job, oh, that's my, me and the Air Force, a whole other trip. We, this, this recorded some other places, we'll do it some other time. Uh, but uh, I was a port and resident for, for uh, Saturday Soul with JB at, at the WPRB, the Princeton radio station, right? So that's, that's where I got my real start with exposure to radio. Anyway, um, so when I graduated, um, I had this paper route. I had a car, the Carina, the best car ever made, okay? In fact, this car, they only made it for two years. This car was so good, they discontinued it. The years later, when I got to Cape Town, I was talking to this mechanic, and I said, you know, how long did that, they have this great car, I told you they had this great car called the Carina, it was like somewhere between this and that, and uh, they said, oh, he said, yeah, that car, he said, well, we used to sell, we, if we sold that car and they drove off, we say, oh, we won't see them anymore, because you could do your own oil changes, it had like, does the Porsche have the bell-shaped housing for the thing it did, it had like a Porsche-shaped kind of engine, it was an incredible car, at any rate, and it had a lot of space, and a pile of newspapers in there and I would toss them on the porch or whatever happened. But I got so good and so fast at it, I finished my route in no time at all, right? And um, it shows you evolution because when I started, it was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But after a while, I could fling it, you know, with my left hand, like say the porch was over that way. I could fling it and land right on the porch from the car. Oh, you get good, you get good if you have to do stuff over and over again. I'm not meandering. I have to do this for a reason. I have to meander. Okay. So, um, so what happens at the end of the thing? We're we delivering the New York Daily, the New York Times, and the Daily News, and the Wall Street Journal Daily, right? And then on the weekend, of course, you had the Sunday Times, or somewhere in the week, we had uh, the Village Voice would come through. So when I finished, I would start. I would read read the papers, right? Now, what I noticed, right? I should say this, unbeknownst to a lot of people, I, I used to be. Here's the word, voracious reader. I mean, not just, I mean, books, everything like that. But the newspaper, I read the sucker. Now, back then, we're talking about the mid-70s now. You know, like I, when I graduated in 70, the time when I got 74, 75, 75, 76, whenever I graduated. They say about 76, 77, something right there. Uh, I would read, the, I would read, say, something in the Wall Street Journal, right, on a Monday, right? 
on Thursday, it would come out in the New York Times a little bit, you know, edited down, dumbed down, okay? On Friday or Saturday, it would come out, that, that topic would come out in the Daily News, you know, really dumbed down, you know, almost like reading headlines, you know. It was interesting to me. I said, huh. Literally, if you read it on Monday in the, in the Wall Street Journal, that news wouldn't get to you, the, 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 I say, us downtrodden, the common man, until like Friday or Saturday. Interesting. I said, hmm. I didn't say hmm that time. I said, hmm. Uh, but then the Village Voice was kind of interesting because it's a weekly thing, so they could be, be more in depth to stuff. You know, people like Jimmy Breslin and Nat Hentoff would, would write in the Village Voice, you know what I mean? And so, so, so you would get, um, a, 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 you know, it might be a, a, a week. Did they say it would be another experience, right? Okay, fine enough. Let's skip forward somehow. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, uh, communications. Wow, I learned my communications by actually seeing. When I got to WBAI in the, in the early 80, 1982, when I got to WBAI, uh, the, the listener sponsored community radio station, right? Which is like, whoa, they had these little cabal groups. And I, I sort of ingratiated myself to each group. And I learned a lot there because like, for instance, I was a production engineer. I, I, I was always helping people anyway, and then finally, I, well, after a while, I became a production engineer. But here's what a production engineer is, and I won't exaggerate now. Say, for instance, a producer would come in with three hours' worth of tape to do their, you know, to, to, to edit their program down or whatever it is. Um, I would be when it, I would be a person that would help them edit it down to, like, well, usually it'd be like a half hour, you know. So you take from three hours to a half hour. Or well, say it's four hours to an hour, an hour program. I would help them. Think. So now... You're getting as a as as a person listening. You're getting basically uh, uh, edited um, version, like a three um, from a three hours to say a, a half hour version. Meanwhile, all the stuff that is left out, the producer is hearing. You know, the person that gathered this and the producers here, and me as an engineer, I'm hearing all that stuff. I'm not paying. I'm just going through my brain, brain, brain. Say, well, so what? Yes, you know, so what? I'm gonna tell you what. I took a I took a defining trip one time in 1989, well 1990 to be exact, with the beginning of 1990, and um, you know by that time I had been in BAI from 1982 to well 1990, so what's that, eight years, whatever it is, and uh, I took this trip, you know, it ended up being like four months. I was only be two months. I said, don't matter. Um, so um, so I was on this launch, and it was this. Uh, I tell the story every time. I want to condense it. I'm going to just say it in this one spot here. I was on this launch. There was a guy that was studying law from UCLA, because, um, and then there was this uh, this girl from um, uh, from the Netherlands, you know, and um, and I was on I was on vacation. Let's put that. And then, this was a we was at Puerto Barrios, uh, of Guatemala. Right? Then we was going over to Livingston, Guatemala, which is like a peninsula, right? Same people, Griffin the people, they look they look like me. Hey! You know, I was quite felt quite at home. Um, so as we was going through this launch, this one guy was, was taking us over and it was just us. There was there's another big boat that goes, I didn't know it at the time, so I just spent the money on the launch. And these two were talking, you know, they would say something. And every once in a while, I would I was still sort of away from them because it was in conversation. I figured they'd rap into each other. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, you know, block. You know what I'm saying? And so every once in a while I said, well, yeah, this, I hear what you're saying, but, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. After a while, they looked at me and said, you're smart. What I realized is that, no, Anthony's not that smart. <laughs> okay, I will have copped a few things, right? I'll cop later. Let me explain. What it was is I had all this in-depth knowledge and they basically were, for me, they was like reading, they, they were like, expel, they were talking the headlines or the first paragraph, you know what I mean? But I had the knowledge of the whole thing like that. Now, this is simple to finish. Let me go back because I just went at, uh, yesterday, I was at uh, Roberto Clemente Park up there in the Bronx. I used to live up there, you know, the towers up there. The, the, I was just doing, it was on the, it's 34 floors. I was on the 32nd floor of this towers. And I just when I had my rollerblades. And what I would do is I would, uh, I was uh, what I would do is I would actually go down with my rollerblades on, and then I would go, you know, go rollerblading down and come back up. But I would take the steps two at a time, take the steps at two, two at a time, and um, and uh, I guess here, man, I was here alone, but now I got these anyway, and that was like a great exercise, you know. 
You said 32 flights of stairs, two at a time with rollerblades on? And this is like the early 80s. This is like when rollerblades were just, in fact, I had a prototype, you know. Anyway, that's what, I, I'm a little ahead of my time all the time. Anyway, so anyway, but, but I was at the park uh, with uh, my, my fraternity. My, my fraternity and sorority, you know, we have an annual picnic every every year. Yeah, and we're all that. old right now. So anyway, what's interesting about being with folks like this, it's like because they, they knew me since like, like nine years old, since I joined the Cadet Corps. So everybody knows my thing. And I would, I would sometimes you forget, like, but believe it or not, I talk a lot now, but I was a quiet kid. Actually, it started because when I was um, three years old, I, Legend is I ain't talked to us three, right? But what happened was um, uh, I was put into the foster care system. I won't get into that right now. And I was abused there, like for two minutes. Well, I was abused there. I kept my grandmother, the rest of you guys. So about 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 five and a half, I was out of that system, living with my grandmother, you know, like that. But I was I won't say traumatized, but at some particular point, this woman had us just had us me and my brother, my older brother, you know, tied back to back. And I was you know weeping, crying, and my my brother. I, mean, I always remember this. He passed last year. Peace and blessings of the eternal soul. He was such a good person. Um, anyway, he said, he said, he says, Anthony, don't cry. Don't worry. I'll always take care of you. Well, I'll take care of you. That's what he said. And I stopped crying. And from that moment on, I ain't cried. I ain't cried till I got to Africa <laughs> in the 90s, right? When I was at Gory Island and all, all kinds of stuff happened there. Like, woof, like that. But when I say cry, you know what I'm talking about. Like, in fact, now that I cried, I had no fear. Like, like well, now, like if a dog barks, you act like, but back then, even when I was a kid, a dog barks, something like that, it was surprised like that. Ice cold, unbelievable. Can't explain this to you. Anyway, back to what I was saying about um, people knowing you right? and so they said well you know you were you was you was you was quiet and I was quiet <laughs> I guess I don't well so what happens in a, in a cadet corps what you do is it's like it's a, every time you advance in the rank you teach the kids under you like that so that sort of started bringing me out to talking and projecting whatever have you then so say from nine to, to well I made the, the oh, then made my fraternity at 15 years old, which is the proper time, by the way. You know, you have to catch boys when they're just getting their dog water, you know what I mean? Or just a little bit after that. You don't know what I mean. This holding fraternities in, in colleges and stuff like, too late. Now it's too late. These people, they, 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 they have another energy happens there. When you get to be 18, that sexual energy kicks in. So you gotta catch uh, boys before, like between, say, like I said, between the, the dog water and like at the most like 16 or something like that. You got to catch them there. And that, that's your initiation. That's when initiation is supposed to happen. That's where the whole man is supposed to happen in that era. Believe me on this, okay? Anyway, back to the point. And so be, because of the character, well, that brought me out a little bit. Then when I made the fraternity, well, it was fraternity, that was a whole other thing. So that brought me out even more, right? Then what happened because of fraternity, I was walking on. Um, I was, anyway, one of my fraternity brothers had made. A, uh, I'm on the third line. He, he was on the first line. Charles me, and I saw him in the street. And be, like I said, they know me. They said, "Oh, Anthony, a new a new thing is happening, man. You'd be perfect for it. You got to blah blah blah." And I get into NEC. I cut that short. Uh, Negro Ensemble Company. So that I was doing theater. Um, anyway, so that brought me out even more, right? Then what happened? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping a little bit. Then I went into Air Force, which I'm, uh, because I was, because the Pentagon is a, it's a, one of those, um, the cadet corps is like, you know, what is it called, semi quasi, you know, you know the whole, like, like more than Boy Scouts, you know, the marching and whatever happened. So when I was in the Air Force, it was like light stuff, you know, I will exercise, blah, blah, and the fraternity, ah, like push up, nothing, nothing, nothing. So it's cool. Okay. So I get, so now I'm going to, um, now I'm in, in, in the Air Force, and, uh, Oh, I should say, I won't go through my whole political thing, but, you know, let's say I knew I was very conscious, you know, this is the Vietnam era. I was very conscious of what's going on, right? Uh, but I was a different kind of, uh, uh, when they say thank you for your service, I know what they're talking about. They think I was, I don't know, maybe I was defending the country, boom, 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 boom. But nah, that was what I was doing as I was helping the community, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned the whole lab. I was we well, we went into the community, gave sickle cell tests, we gave uh, lead poisoning tests, you know, like the Panthers, you know what I mean? This is like 72, 73, like that. Um, in, in this, into 74, testing the community. So basically, I used the Air Force to do the community work, you know, do the work of my peoples. <laughs> so 
is weird. Okay, so I got out of the Air Force. Got into da da da. Okay, now we back up to where I am. Um, let's go back to to BAI. So my exposure to uh, media is like it's very exposed to media. But when I was graduating. Um, people expected me because I had a certain profile. You know, back then in the seventies, I was a—I wouldn't say I was a handsome young man, but or a handsome young man. You know, I had, had the, it was a thing called a buppy. Yeah, the yuppie, the, where you know, the, the, the dudes. You know, we, we looked a certain way, and so we could, you know, we, you know, we go into the corporate world. They they, they expected us because you know, we're a generation. You know, we're going to be a black person going in. So they asked me, "Oh, you going to CBS, NBC, ABC?" A bit then, which is then, you know, because because everybody knew, but you know, I was the top of the class, and. Uh, I said, top, yeah, top of the class. Me and Ron McGee, we had, we had the same profile. We both were young black men, you know, and, you know, same, almost the same thing. He went the corporate way, you know, and the corporate way, when corporate, you go to a small market and somebody, so somebody sort of mentors you, like, whatever. Then you go to a bigger market, like he went from uh, someplace in the South to, like, San Francisco. And then he went to New York, right? By the time he got to New York, when the whole thing, I I was at BAI, you know, really doing whatever, and he quit what he was doing in the corporate world because all they do is let him edit, let it edit. That's all he did. He did BAI, I did everything. I learned to do everything. It's like when I was a medic. I learned to do everything. We did everything. I did every every lab test all the way to you know autopsies. Did everything. So I have a medical background in a way, and my media is like complete, right? And so. So Ron, 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 uh, 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 join me there. Oh, that's when we. That's when I started. That's when I started doing no more radio. No more radio was exceptional. I forgot. I got my book here. Let me try to see. I think I wrote this down. I had a staff at No More Radio. When I say staff, this is all volunteers work. So people just did it because, well, I guess they just like having hanging out with me. Here's my staff at No More Radio. We had two people doing a myat. Right, that's an African thing. Um, Sister Selma, brother Reggie, right? We had two interns, Harold Lucius, great radio force, and Brenda Black, right? We had the, the news, we had a rotating news crew, like every, um, and it was like four four people, so every fourth time they would come, and they would do stuff that, um, that, that they were reporting, and stuff that they, that they, they couldn't get on or they wanted to in depth, they would do it on normal radio. So it was like Ron McGee, that's my man, you know, peace and blessings on his eternal soul. Uh, Paul DiRienzo, uh, Kai Crooks, and uh, PJ Business League. They all had a different thing, you know? I, I would want me to name their races, right? Basically, Ron, Black, American, whatever, you know, ADOS, or Paul DiRenzo, just like you said, you know, Italian, I guess. Uh, Kai Crooks, um, a black black woman, but she had a, 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 a Caribbean background like that. Um, I don't want to say it, but, you know, beautiful woman, you know what I mean? Peter, Peter J. Billingsley, he's, he's white by one of the radical, white, lower east side cats, you know what I mean? He would do some stories, woo, like that. Okay, let's keep on going. Herbologist on staff, every once in a while, he would come up with this, uh, Dr. John E. Moore. Dr. John Moore, you know Dr. Moore. Well, you don't know Dr. Moore, but he used to be a resident her herbologist. He would come in, he was funny. Now, well, if you know John Moore, I would say, <laughs> he was sitting on the side. I said, well, Dr. Moore, I, I, I hated something about this thing called I don't know, uh, Parker the Aqua or something like that. And he was, then he go off, he said, Parker the Aqua. Guyana has Parker the Aqua. The best. And he'd go off. And he would just keep, and I would sometimes, I'd leave the room, go get, get, you know, get some water, go to the cooler, you know, <laughs> go up front. <laughs> he used to be talking when I come back. And then I may ask another question. Great, I love that. that I love that man. Professor James Small, was our historian philosopher. You know, James was great too. We had this, I won't say act, we had this little thing. I would say, but James, that sounds awfully racist. They're gonna say that sounds racist. I say, he says, oh, that's not coming from me. I got that from a white man. I read it in the white man's book. You all believe in a white man, don't you? Hilarious, right? Okay, oh, Sophia Henderson Holmes. Peace and blessings on her eternal soul. I mean, I don't go to hospitals, but when she had, well, she had a cancer and she was, she was, you know, she was in the hospital. And actually, I, I, I visited her because I love Sophia just that much, you know. Um, but Sophia Henry Holmes was, and, and Kurt Lampkin Jr., he also passed, I hear, but uh, peace and blessings on his eternal soul also. These were my two poets in residence, and they would, you know, they would do poetry. <laughs> um, uh, uh, oh, oh, I had uh, Lucia Sierra, uh, beautiful. If you want to know what everybody was, uh, 
Oh, well, Lucia. Lucia looked like, you know, you know the Prince, um, the, the, the the number series, like, you know, the one to six, one to whatever, that series. They, they had a girl on the cover with the polka dots, whatever. Lucia looked like that. Okay. Um, uh, Chris Brandt was my community poet. We, we do this thing once a month where we do this poetry and send it to Bluefields, Nicaragua. And I still, you know, Chris, Chris Brandt to this day, we, we're really close like that. I mean, I call him a real friend. You know what I mean? He's really my friend. Um, then we have various uh, commentaries from, from, from community people like that. So that was the, that was the core of No More Radio. Unbelievable. Uh, and one time we was at BAI, right? And you know how BAI, anybody can come in. So we was having some meetings. And I said, I said, excuse me, this doesn't mean anything to me really, but I said, how many people have a degree in communications? You know, I think I was like, one or there's only two people at the undergrad you know, degree in communication. So I didn't mean it for anything. I just want to shut up a conversation that they was having. They were doing some some nonsense, you know. Well, I'm sorry. That's just the way the AI is. I just had to say that. Okay. So I go, I'm, I'm, I'm chugging along here. I'm chugging along. I'm chugging along. So I know all the rest of this stuff. Then you have to understand what happens is people, when you do certain things, people have these, they have religious beliefs. They usually do emotional things. I mean, I was just, I just had my hair cut by my, by my Iman barber, my street barber out there, you know, uh, up, up by Mar Mar Marcus Garvey Park, the north end of Marcus Garvey Park, you know, my Fifth Avenue. I, I go to him to get my stuff done, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just that way, I like to support the down people, the downtrodden, or the people that, 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 are, that are, you know, the real people, you know. And because I was there, um, I, I was waiting for my two fraternity brothers, while well, they was waiting for me because uh, we was going up to this thing that we had yesterday, like I said, Puerto Clemente Park. And so there's another uh, guy that's also um, a Muslim that was, you know, with, with, with my E-man guy, they're both Muslims, right? And so the other guy got in conversation with, with Buddy. Anyway, he got his conversation about with you. And Buddy, you can't, Okay, Buddy is the Professor James Kanye. He's, you know, he's like, you know, uh, he's like Pan Africanist to the core, Ray. But his knowledge base is like in both religion. He didn't. His thing is not even in religion. It's, it's in, you know, he reads the Katusha, all that stuff. You know, one of big time cat. You know what I mean? People who know him know him. People. He's on a level of you know, basically. He he sat at the foot of John Henry Clark, you know, sat for the degrees, whatever. You know, people are like Marimba Ani, that's his associates. Those those kind of people. Like Greg Carr knows him. Don't believe me. People people in the know know, right? But he's down low, like the rest of us people go. Us people in Pentecostal, you don't know who we are, but we there doing stuff. Anyway, um, so uh, uh, but they had and the guy was just talking, dabbling. I don't know what was going on with him, you know. But I, it got me to thinking also, because I, I got to in here, my, my religious, ah. Now, my religious thing, a, a real stuff, it's not study, it's like stuff that happened. I got this whole thing here. I don't know if I want to, yeah, I'm going to take the time and read it off to you, sorry. You know what I mean? Because this, I'm doing this for a reason, right? I'm, I'm doing this because I'm tired of asking, people asking me some dumb questions, not dumb questions, questions, stuff like that. I want to put it in one spot. I want to put the link in, on, on, on when you, you know, like uh, my signature box uh, for for my uh, for emails. So if anybody really know that want to know about my little course, my little journey, they they can find out. But uh, we we're in religion right now only because well I get to, I get to the med I get back to the medical this thing this whole COVID and whatever have you maybe. Uh, this guy Babino is is Brazilian and it was his name Babino is his religious name is but it's uh, Daniel de uh, Bola. And that's he's Brazilian. At the time the, that I was dealing, this was in the mid '90s. He was like the third highest Yoruba, I mean, contemplate priest in Brazil. You know, he uh, it's like like being the, like the I don't know the, the cardinal of, of of Chicago or something like that. You know, big big time thing. But anyway, um, uh, the Our Lady of the Rosary, the slave built church in in Bahia, Brazil. I I worship there. It's three of the things. Anyway. Uh, the Vodun ceremony at, at, at City College, uh, uh, James Small brought me to that. So I, re I know what a real Vodun ceremony is. I saw my third eye in Gambia. Literally saw my, in, you know, the Gambia. I saw that. Let me get into that. I was possessed at Gory Island and yanked out of there, saved by some um, some sisters, you know, in, in the culture, right? Uh, I, I had I did meditation at the Machu Madir, which is Oroville, India. When I say meditation, I mean I'm just they have this, this tourist thing people go through. No, I I I knew a guard. This this older sister, she was a guard, and I was hanging with, I was hanging 
you know, hanging in her circle. Well, I hang it with her. And because I was, she was American, I was American. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. So she had to do like guard duty at uh, the March of Madeira. And so I got to be like a whole day, two, two or three hours of meditating with this big spear. You, if you know India, if you know, if you know Oravo, you understand what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm just talking about Oravo. Uh, I was at there one time, uh, Sri Aurobindo had a, had a, uh, there was a thing in Pontecherry for Sri Aurobindo, who, who or was named after him and him and mother. They call her the mother. You know, it's associated with that. Uh, um, so I got a blessing from that from from that thing. That's interesting too because usually they do the um, when they do the the Hindu thing, whatever they do, they they do like this kind, you know, like that. But the the people for the the Sri Aurobindo people, they sort of like touch the hand to their heart, and and sort of do a salute like that. And it's interesting because all my life, even way before that, that's the way I, I salute, I touch my heart, do like that. And I didn't know this stuff, but this is how hooked up I am. Okay, let me keep on going. I bathed in the Ganges River in India. That's what they just named. Uh, uh, I got uh, uh, that uh, in the, uh, well, oh, I was at the Temple of the, of the, of the Reclining Planning of Buddha in Bangkok. So I experienced that. Um, Oh, the the uh, the the caves, the Buddha caves along the Mekong River. Experienced that. Uh, I prayed in Sistine Chapel, in Vatican City. Actually, people don't understand. It's like a tourist thing, and people be making noise. And guard every once a once in a while has to go silencio because they don't realize it's a chapel. But I prayed in that chapel. Uh, uh, oh, also the Basilica of Saint Anthony in in in, in uh, Padua, Italy. I'm named after Saint Anthony. I was there. They only got his esophagus because he he was talker. I didn't know he was talker. And he's the one with the with the animals. He, he he's the one that first started. He's the one that started the monk thing. You know, monks did going alone, but well, at least in the Catholic pantheon, he's the one that did that. He talked the animal. He's, he's a solitary kind of guy. Okay, totally in that. Uh, oh. I've been to the holy city of Tuba in Senegal. Holy city, Tuba is like, you know, you got Mecca for the, the whole thing, but, but, but there's a holy city in in, in, uh, in Senegal. And uh, not a lot of people, that's where the bifalls are, my boys. I, mean, I shouldn't say that. Uh, yeah. You don't want to piss off a bifall. That's all I want to tell you. <laughs> Some people say bifall is actually the original, it's just, it's called the Rastas and whatever. No, bifalls are like the source of the Rastas. Just saying. Okay? This is, you know, you can look it up for yourself, okay? Oh, I was at Basilica, the Lady of, of Guadalupe. Oh, on Easter, I, I went to, I uh, was in Mexico. So on Easter ceremony, I had been fasting that time before that. And so I, uh, so Easter and that year, I fasted for the 40 days before that. But I went to, I broke the fast, whatever, at the at the um, Basilica, of the Lady of Guadalupe in, in Mexico City, big thing. I, I was at a mass at, at St. Patrick's Cathedral, of course, in New York. Oh, the Grotto Waters, the Grotto Holy Waters of upstate New York. So as a kid, we used to go there all the time because the waters, you know, the waters are very, very good. Spring waters, whatever happened. But the Grotto is, you know, you know, don't worry about it. Oh, I was at the Blue Cliff Monastery. That's at Thich Nhat Hanh, you know, the, 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 um, uh, the Vietnamese uh, a monk who's in France, whatever have you. Now, in fact, uh, Martin Luther King uh, uh, put him up for a Nobel Prize, Peace Prize one year. Uh, back then, uh, so I, I actually on my YouTube channel, some you see, I got a you know him walking or whatever like that. Uh, I'm gonna say right there. Oh, uh, oh, I was at a tabernacle in Marcus Garvey Village in uh, in uh, in Philippi in in in, uh, in Cape Town. All right, and uh, oh, it's there, you know, you know, got past the Dutch on the left hand side kind of thing. Oh, I got a blessing one year from the high a high priestess of Ghana because they was at the International um, Festival in Brooklyn. And I just went up there sometime. I, they had a little space there. I just went up there and I, I did my thing. I asked for a blessing. And she was questioning people. Uh, they said, well, he wants a blessing. But she has to give you a blessing. So she gave me a blessing. It was on my birthday that year. A couple of, about three years ago, four years ago, whenever it was. Um, oh, my spiritual advisor is my Yoruba, my, my spiritual advisor is the Yoruba, Yoruba priest, David D. Wright. Um, you know, exposed to Europe, you know, for a long, long, long time. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I got baptized. Just um, yeah, my bap my, bap my baptismal. St. Anthony's Padua Church. Oh okay. yeah, uh, when I was my baptism, you know, when you're a kid, blah 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 blah, was uh, at uh, St. Anthony's in the in, in the Bronx. Okay. Oh oh, and uh, I should say this. I was in Armand Jordan. 
but I just refused to go to the Dead Sea. You know, like, I ain't going there, right? So those are like religious experiences, but I, there's more, but that's, that's a big one. I have to tell you all of that because here's the thing that I've realized lately, like, lately, I just know I'm connected. I mean, you know, I do my, my prayer and supplication in the mornings, you know, do my Buddha, da, 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 da. I pray different than other people. You have to look at uh, Pray Like a Baby, one of my postings, Pray Like a Baby, look that up, right? Uh, but all throughout the, all throughout the uh, day when something happens, all I do is I say, you know, uh, I give thanks and praises. So I say, uh, I say, uh, well, I say, uh, uh, thank thank God, praise the Lofi. That's my thing all day long. So God, my God consciousness is all day long. Yeah, that's what's supposed to be. When, you, when people are praying five times a day, like the Muslims pray five times a day, the Catholic, if you, if you can't consider, you have to have your when the Catholics wake up, they have to do a morning prayer when they get out of bed. They have three meals, they do grace, three meals, and then you have the night prayer. That's five times. So a lot of people do five times. Five is one of those extreme numbers. But I, I, I can't tell you how many times I do it. So, and sometimes um, I'm, something will happen, and not that I forget, but much later I said, it's in my mind. I say, thank God, praise the Lord. In my, or out loud, but in my mind, by something that happened maybe three hours before. That's just the way to, okay. Now, here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm almost ended here. Uh, you know, everybody's dealing with this COVID thing, COVID, this fear, whatever have you. And that's one of these, this guy that triggered me, this guy, you know, sent this article from New York Times about you know, COVID, whatever it is. And um, you see, I haven't, I'm not taking a shot. Okay, I'm not taking a shot, not because I'm not anti vaccine I know everybody says that, man. But here, I took, okay, let me put it this way. I was at the VA, and they, every time you go to the told, they always ask you about you taking a shot, blah, blah, blah. And so I have a new doctor, because, right? you know, they do this rotation in the VA, you know, whatever. And so I said, look, I'm tired of telling you all this. You all need to just write this in the thing. I'm not taking any shot. It has nothing to do with COVID. I haven't had a flu shot or any kind of shot like that since I, since 1970, literally since 1970, I haven't had no shots, none. Okay, tetanus, yeah. Um, and then uh, last year, was it last year or the year before, they gave me some sort of shot I think it was for, I forgot what it was for. And, I, and it, 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 it triggered people. I said, ah, and so definitely no way for me. And I tell her, I said, look, Y'all keep on telling you, you want to give me something. Y'all don't dialogue with me. You don't understand. I, if, if 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 my immune system is so strong, you all should be studying me, not me doing doing it, doing your experiment. You know what I mean? Oh man, I unloaded on this on on, on this doctor. Man, I, I felt sorry for. Her. I I, just, I had I said, look, it's not you. It's just that, you know, I'm just da da da. So, again, people take. I said, boy, you might spread this. Y'all getting the wrong information there. Don't send me that. Go, go to Dr. B. There's this bunch of people, I mean, real researchers that have been doing this, that tell you what the COVID really is and that, 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 that and how things, are, the, the spike things and all the rest of that stuff and how it's transmitted and all the rest of that stuff. Go research them. Don't send me nothing about you know, the, the, some some administrator. This is the problem. You, you When these administrators, Dr. Fauci is an administrator. These people, are some nice people are giving, the, 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 the administrators talk to the politicians. So you're getting like fourth, fourth hand information that may or may not be correct, you see? Let me tell you about an administrator. When I was in the Air Force, and this be on how I got the Princeton too, I was I a was lab technician, right? Lab technician is the one that does all the tests for the doctors. So we know as much as the doctors go, you know? In fact, when I got out, they wanted they said, you should go to school. No, somebody asked, they, asked, they requested I go to school for, you know, medical school. I said, I'm a theater person, you know, medical school, you know, I'm not into it. But what happened really was that, I'm going to just give you a sort of numbers, right? When it was, uh, it was at the time I was there, it was a hospital, was, it was a um, uh, Princeton Hospital. And then, right when I was in the middle of my thing, just when I get out the Air Force, they made it Princeton Medical Center. Here's what it means by medical center. A hospital, let's say a hospital had, I'm just going to name numbers just to say, say you had seven doctors in the hospital, and and, out of, and then seven doctors and two administrators, right? Let's say that's what it's, two administrators, okay? When it became a medical center, all of a sudden, you would have four administrators and five doctors. And then start getting worse than that, worse than that. So then everything becomes whatever it becomes. It's like, so my brain is going like, no, you don't understand. We don't have doctors. And then all these doctors are indebted. With, 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 so they just got to toe the line. I mean, even in, in, in the medical thing, it's so much and so complicated. Like, you remember years ago when the pharmaceuticals would come in, there was a new pharmacy, and, the, and, and sometimes 
the, the, the pharmaceutical salesman would actually be doing the operation. Did you, you, you didn't know that? Look, the medical system is the medical system. And my, my man, Jake, who I'm staying with right now, he's had an idea. He said, you know, if you want to deal with this, really, they want to deal with uh, uh, Medicare for all. First, you have just, just make sure the doctors are not in debt. So let it cover the, 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 the lawsuits, whatever have you, so the doctors don't have to, and don't pressure them, so that they don't have to be towing the lines. You know, because we all told line because we have some sort of reverence for doctors. Okay, no, 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 no. but I work with doctors. I have, I have reverence for doctors who know what they're talking about. Okay, not ones that are reading off the paper and saying, "Well, I got to do this because blah 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 blah." <laughs> okay, so I had to say all that stuff. I want to get it out there. I think I'm going to start this thing. Uh, I, I I don't curse, right? But two two times a year I can curse on my birthday, right? birthday proper, maybe one or two days around there. I, I need to just stay on my birthday right? because I'm usually traveling so I don't curse anyway. But also New Year's Eve, New, Year, New Year's Eve, yeah, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, those two days, let's say let's say a three-day period I can curse. So what I'm going to do, see right now I'm by a bottle of water. I would like to be by bodies of water. But what I'm going to do, starting this next New Year's, I'll be in, I'll be, I'll be in Africa anyway. I will deliver this kind of my, my yearly message where I can use any kind of language I want and post it up. Because remember, I use my, my YouTube, my YouTube is we're not monetized, right? And, you know, uh, it's Creative Commons, you know. So what that means is that uh, the algorithm, the, I don't have a lot of subscribers, nobody, they don't push anything towards me, which is what I like. Because I use YouTube the way it was meant to be, which is, this, this is an archival service for me. In fact, when this goes up, automatically my bit shoot takes it too. So when if you shoot start, start to get funny, you know it doesn't matter. But my bit shoot will be back up, and I'll get another one sooner or later to back up a whole lot of other things. Because remember, look, wherever you wherever you store and stuff, it still still degrades. If you look on the first the, the, my thing, my first few things, you can see they starting to degrade because that's just what happens. Even if you have something on a, in, a, in, a, in an external drive, it'll start to degrade. I don't know what the cloud is about, but you know. But anything will start to degrade, you know. But the only thing that hasn't degraded a whole lot is, is recording records, you know, the wax or whatever have you. But everything, every other medium, the tapes, the dats, the whatever it is, starts to degrade. So, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you like that. Anyway, so I'm going to leave you with, with, with this one. So you see, I'm going to buy a bottle of water. Buy a bottle of water. I love water. I'm always buying water. This is a lake. Hey, we buy the lake. We're in Prospect Park, Brooklyn. See? You know, hey, I grew up in the South Bronx at the hub. You know, we had we had we had we had rivers. You know, rivers coming by, all that stuff. So anyway, so that's it. From me, T. See, T. I look like this. From the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.